Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Eastern Mine, The Lost Souls of Tong No. This time we'll be taking on the role of Byo, the mechanic. According to his book page, Byo is the only creature born in the land of dreaming that has leaves on his body, and as a result Byo likes to disguise himself among trees and whatnot. But his leaves also apparently make him the target of bullying among the land of dreaming residents who are jealous of his leaves. Workplace bullying apparently being a common problem for the inhabitants of Tongno. I've kind of noticed that Byo looks vaguely like a lizard, and this has also caused me to realise that most of the other characters in this game are also kind of loosely based upon real world animals as well. Gyo is clearly some kind of bug, Toe is vaguely humanoid. I've no idea how Jin fits into this at all. Right, enough about character designs. Our goal in life as Bio is to go to the Land of Dreaming and fix whatever it is that broke because we are the mechanic that all have been longing for. And because we are the mechanic that all have been longing for, apparently the Land of Dreaming stuff has been broken for quite some time now. And this opening area in the Land of Dreaming is a very short maze that only goes in one direction. There are no dead ends in it. And we arrive at the Palace of Dreaming. Before we can enter the Palace of Dreaming, we're stopped by these two guards. They have a riddle for us. We were told the answer to this riddle way back in the first video, but if you can't remember, it's the golden flower that wakes up the King of Desire. The two guards also claim to be in need of it as well. They have a penchant for alchemy and gold, you see. I find it curious they call them short-tempered, despite the fact they'll apparently forgive you for being irritating twice, but on the third time, whoa man, don't bite my head off. Literally, as the case may be. Let's have a look around the Palace of Dreaming. This here door is locked, but there's some kind of vague indication on the door, so who knows what that means. Anyway, the king we need to speak to is in the centre, but there's a bunch of rooms that we can look in first. And this here room is just... flat out depressing. From this scene it's possible to intuit that Magatamas are what power or produce dreams or something like that, but I don't see our Magatama floating around in this pile, so I'm just gonna get out of this room. Let's see what's behind door number two. One of these must contain something useful. Ah, this room. This room is a completely functional, straight warp to the Land of Desire but not much else, and we don't want to go to the Land of Desire right now, so let's check out the third door. I'm going to check out all of these. One Fang Xing, who goes completely apeshit when you click on anything, and he's super hard to click on and get his hint, which just gives you a clue as to the layout of the Land of Time. The entrance of the Fire Tower faces north, and you face south at the start, so if you loop back around like I demonstrated, you get in there very quickly. Right, next door. I can only imagine what it's like to be a door-to-door -door salesman in the Land of Tongno. This creature, the Pang Chie, or something like that, I can't pronounce Chinese names. It's kind of hard to tell what he's doing because the animation goes by really fast, but he is chopping off his own arm and eating it repeatedly. And he will do that forever. Another thing that serves no purpose, but it's just kind of there to freak me out. And this room appears blank at first, but on the right wall contains probably the most useful thing in here. It's a detailed map of the Land of Dreaming. You can see the king is in the center, you can see a land of life warp on the other side, and you can see some of the doors have faces on them, specifically the one that we passed by that was locked earlier. Those are later playable characters, those doors are only of usage to them. This room is very dark at first. But once you click on the wall, characters appear. It's at this point I discovered that the eyeglasses actually work on any loose characters in the game, and not just the ones on the keyboard. So this one gives us the clue Red Ying, Blue Yang, if you couldn't already figure out which brother was which in the Fire Tower of Time. And this is me having some navigational issues, because everything is a bit spatially weird in this game. Everything appears to be slightly further away than I think it is. At any rate, we're in the door, and the only thing in here is a warp to the Phantom Marketplace, which we are never going to visit again for the rest of the game. So, moving straight on to the next door down. Probably could have figured that one out on my own game, but thanks for the help nonetheless. Next door! Now this is a far more useful hint. This movie is basically telling us that in the Land of Desire there's a pillar that will move, lead us to a room where we can get the golden flower from a couple of dragons. That sounds really stupid when you say it out loud, but that is the solution to the puzzle. And this room is a functional warp to the Land of Life, just like the other one that was a warp to the Land of Desire. Not very interesting. 
Okay, so this room contains another hint movie, but this one is actually relevant to our current character. Bit swift, so it's hard to make out, but basically he's chucking an ant at the King of Life's face and then going inside the Tree of Life. Alrighty, next door. There's only two more left on the outer rim, I promise. And this Feng Xing is telling us that a Magatama in the room that he is presently next to is sick, and that if we touch him, he will die. This is a truth. That door is locked, so we don't have anything to do with it right now. Let's actually have a look at this sick Magatama. Yeah, that looks pretty sick, alright. Don't touch it. You'll die. Now let's go to the inner rim of the Palace of Dreaming. There's more doors to open. Exciting stuff. And this hint movie is telling us that if we type the letters Kagio into the keyboard, we will summon the King of the Land of Time. That's another way to figure out the King of the Land of Time's name if you couldn't already figure it out from the people in the Fire Tower of Time. And this room contains a monster that appears to be dreaming, and he has our water Magatama. But we can't get it right now because if we interrupt his dream, we just get kicked out. We need to solve that problem later. So let's check out the third and final door of the inner rim. The two guards from earlier possess this room, and their musings are gonna give us clues, so pay attention. So yes, in spite of it all, something as banal as a peach is used as a weapon in this game. And as you can see from this here piece of dialogue, the two guards, Ung and Ah, believe themselves to be higher creatures. They're a very haughty pair. That little exchange is a completely inconsequential flavour text thing that only serves to flesh out the characters of R and Ung a little bit better. And that was the last door! Finally, we can progress to the centre of the Palace of Dreaming now, as soon as I can figure out where the centre actually is. One brief check to the sides before we go in the palace door. Nah, nothing to be seen here, just two dead ends. Let's go inside and see what the king actually has to say. Sharp-eyed viewers have doubtlessly noticed the very interesting pink object in the cage over there. We'll figure out how to get our hands on it a bit later, but for now, EXPOSITION! Under the Tree of Life. I'm pretty sure he saw a video about how we can go about doing that. Anyway, curiously enough, the yellow creature in front of us and the blue creature behind it are two different entities. The yellow one is the one who speaks stupid. Anyway, let's get that peach out of that cage. Apparently he's very much willing to just give away a deadly weapon if we can answer his question. It's another riddle. I use the word riddle very loosely, and at this point in the game we've been hit with the answer about three or four times, so you should be able to intuit that the answer is in fact ying. And this is where an annoying bug happens. Sometimes when I answer the peach riddle, my cursor becomes invisible, which makes it kind of difficult to pick up the peach, and then if you don't pick up the peach and then you turn back, the peach is back in its cage, so I have to answer the riddle again. And occasionally the cursor won't appear like three or four times until I can actually grab the peach. Anyway, now that we have the peach, I know who to use it on. Hey you! Jerk who stole our Magatama. Cold-blooded murder for the peace of our soul. Well, I guess the water Magatama does signify change. Life to death is a pretty significant change. So that's all there is to see in the Land of Dreaming, really. Now we need to go to the Tree of Life, but there's nothing new to see on the way, so I'll see you there. So here we are again at the Tree of Life. And we know we need an ant to chuck at the King of Life's face, because he has an allergy to them or some such. But how do we get an ant? It's a bit confusing. Remember when I said the Tree of Life sort of exists in non-Euclidean space? You kind of just have to rotate in place such that the layout and things around the Tree of Life change, so... There you go. There's your ant. I don't know how anyone would think to do that, unless they just found it randomly, but... It's there nonetheless. 
Now, rotate one more time and there's a sign here with characters on it. We can investigate those with our eyeglasses. Mokugyo. Yeah, another hint to throw an ant at him. I think we understand the solution by now, game. So let's actually make with the whole ant throwing thing. Once the ant has been thrown, you have like a couple of seconds to click on the King of Life's mouth to go inside him. Otherwise, the bird on his head will peck away the ant and you lose your chance and have to go find another ant. It doesn't take very long, but it's annoying nonetheless. Nothing in the lower level here, so we go up and turn around. And there's one loose Magatama that's not moving. That is the wood Magatama, our Magatama. So that makes two of the five so far that we've found, making good progress. And this is a strange, strange kind of puzzle coming up here. We have to answer a riddle to get the eyeball of dreaming that we need, you see, but I don't understand the answer to the puzzle at all. This is- this broke me. I had to look up a guide to get the solution for this. He asks who the eyeball of dreaming belonged to. You would interpret that it would be Sui Cheng, the king of the land of time. Dreaming, rather. But that's not the case. It belongs to Togyo, and he is the king of the central mountain of Tongno. Which is weird and confusing, because this character hasn't been referenced by anyone, I don't think anyone tells you the solution to this game. I've searched high and low trying to figure out what the prompt is for you to know that solution to the puzzle. I've not found it. I don't know. I give up on that one. I used a guide. Sue me. Anyway, one trip to game FAQs later and we have our eyeball of dreaming and the only thing we need to do now is go back to the land of dreaming and use it. Instead of using the Land of Dreaming Warp inside the Tree of Life, though, I'm going to take the scenic route and enter through Sato's face again, because there's a thing in the transition tunnel that's actually worth seeing. So I'll see you there and save you the walk backwards. First is this Fang Xing, who tells us that this Amon character is no good. We've not actually seen Amon yet, we'll get to him later. And here is an octopus frozen in ice. If we click on him, he suddenly starts sounding off an intruder alert, and then he explodes. Believe it or not, this is relevant. Keep it in mind later. A bit further down the tunnel, we meet this blue chap, who I believe is some sort of relative to the red monster who had our Magatama that we killed with a peach earlier. Probably best that we don't mention that and get a move on. Alright, one trip back through the Palace of Dreaming, later and here we are in the center. And the last puzzle before Bio's prerequisite ending death speech thing is quite literally use wrench on problem. So we finished Byo's life, and I've come to the conclusion I quite like doing the lives in pairs, so we're going to do just one more short life before I cap off this video for now. We're going to lead the life... ...of Zen, a creature of the Land of Dreaming. Does he look at all familiar to you? I think you can hazard a guess at where this is going. Sadly, Zen's book page is extraordinarily sparse. What you see is pretty much what you get with this character. And so, predictably, we are that octopus that was stuck in the ice, and the only actions we can take is to look around presently and read Zen's musings about how he hates his job and he wants out of the ice. It's not like I can't sympathise, being stuck in ice all day must be pretty boring. There's got to be worse jobs in the world, though. And if you've been paying attention at all, you can obviously figure out how this ends. An intruder occurs, and then we end up getting killed. Just like we killed the octopus earlier in Byo's life. Which brings up an interesting point about how this game handles time. Apparently, when I said it was a non-linear game, that also extends to its viewpoint on time. Because you can perform the action of killing Zen yourself at any point in the game, even right at the end, 
where it is necessary for the killing of Zen to have occurred before you're even allowed to get to that point. I'll cap this video off before I cause a time paradox. Thank you for watching this episode of Let's Play Eastern Mind. I hope to see you next time.